Today I'm in conversation with leading interior designer Vinita Chaitanya. Based in Bangalore, shuffling between her holiday home and home, she seeks design inspiration from her travels. She is also a huge lover of the art and heritage of India which you see in each and every project of hers. More unique than the other with beautiful art pieces and jaw-dropping design. I hope you enjoy this conversation between me and Vinita today about her journey from where she started and how the design world has changed over the years. Enjoy. Hi guys, thank you for joining us for yet another episode of the Shan show. Very excited to have somebody in the design field who I love and look up to. Uh, Vinita, thank you for being here. Uh, you know, Vinita Chaitanya is an ace interior designer and somebody that I'm sure every one of you follow. Uh, her design, her aesthetic, her style is one that everyone uh loves and follows at least all my friends I know they always tell me you dress so well uh, your colors and I mean look at the backdrop behind you so thank you so much for being here today it's a pleasure to be interviewing you thank you Sean for having me and I know you reached out to me a couple of times and I was I was doing something else but I'm also super excited to be here with you Thank you so much. So I'm going to start straight off by asking you um, the question, how did you begin? When did this all start and what's the journey been like? Oh gosh, it's been so long that I, uh, I honestly forget sometimes, but it's been, well, I started my, on my own in 1988 and um, out of Calcutta, uh, I interned for three years, four years almost with the Oberoi brand there. Uh, an intern under the toughest, but the best. And, um, you know, and when I got married and moved here, uh, I said, you know, I actually wanted to take a sabbatical, but it never happened. I think this is the only sabbatical which happened over the last year for me, um, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. But uh, yeah, so it's been 88 till until now. It's what, 32 years, <laughs> 32 years. And and it's been incredible. It's been tough uh, in a way because our industry was pretty much inorganized at that time. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was just it, it, even I was evolving and uh, the industry was evolving. And, you know, when I started, it was more doing work for corporate offices and multinational groups who were just coming in. And... And I'm so old. Uh, I even remember paging. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh gosh! I, I don't think you guys even know what the telephone is. That <laughs> change your dial looks like. But yeah. I remember paging days, and uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been amazing. Yeah, you've had quite the journey. And, and like you said, you started more corporate first, different offices, different places. But I mean, your journey till now, the stuff you're doing, and I see it all over your Instagram, style has changed over time. Interior style has changed. What would you describe your design style as? I always say that I love everything and it's uh, super eclectic with me. Um, uh, if I was designing for Sean, for example, I, I, I know that you love color and, you know, you love that whole vibe and sometimes you're boho uh, and that's what I see of you. But uh, I would actually design for you, Sean, but um, uh, personally, it's very eclectic. Uh, today, my personal style is more to use Indian craft and art and layer it um, layer it with textures uh, it's it's just about the feel of things it's 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 about it's not just it's not just what i bring to the to the to your face physically but it's how and where it's come from and it's the history and it's maybe it's the travel and you know it's a lot put together but it, it is totally eclectic but there's a huge amount of indianness to it which wasn't there earlier my own style has evolved as well I think that's nice, you know, when you change uh, your own style changes, I think that never, no project is ever the same no. uh, over time, it kind of changes up. Um, so, you know, we've all been in lockdown. I, I think we're back there actually as we speak. But um, a lot of people told me, you know, when they were designing homes or doing up their own home, um, so stuff changed, you know, what you probably wanted three years ago and what you want in your home now. I saw so many people buying art in the lockdown. I saw so many people yeah. changing the color of their wall, just going on a yeah. whim. 
Is there anything um, that's been that for you, like any learning in terms of design in the lockdown? So uh, I personally, um, uh, you know, went a lot into nature and you would have seen that uh, in my course. I was not a gardening person. I always thought I had terrible brown fingers. I mean, it was like, uh, you know, if I touch something, it's going to die. But uh, 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 in the garden, uh, I kind of discovered uh, a serenity. And uh, of course, there's always been that beauty. The colors have always uh, impacted me a lot. Uh, uh, but somehow I, I started enjoying the process. There also I started layering and I'm like, okay, I need the tall plants at the back and then I layer downwards. And, uh, and these colors work well this side and the light becomes in this side. So I know what colors work this side. And uh, so it was in my own head and um, I didn't, I never used to use too many um, natural plants indoors. I used to use huge amounts of flowers, but never a plant. Because again, I used to feel that if I don't, if I can't take care of it, I don't want it to die in front yeah. of me. You know, it's that, uh, it's like you have a pet. Um, and, and for me, uh, that was, a killer, but now I've started this whole thing of yes, I can nurture it. And I think it's all a question of time and how much time you can spend at home. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, um, and I love that. Yeah, it's huge. Okay. So this whole, this whole nature coming into the house. Um, and actually, if you read up now, it's a huge trend. It's, it's you know, bringing the outdoors in or living as much as you can outdoors. Uh, even if it's an apartment, you know, how much green you'd like to have in or, or it's just like, you know, if you, if you can just go for a walk and imbibe that green. Uh, so it's just a small thing. And I think, I think that's been a huge, huge change uh, over this year for me. Uh, plus, there's been a lot of discovery. There's been um, a discovery about, you know, I mean, while I've just started putting it out there that I love this and I love that, and you know, I like doing flowers or I like putting on my frames or I like botanicals or I like Indian art. I've been, I've, you know, I've obviously shown it on my page, but um, it's also been a discovery that I can now study it more. Um, and, you know, sometimes I do this history lesson on my Instagram and I, uh, I, I feel it's necessary because if, even if 10 people listen to it, I'm good. I'm honestly good about it. I'm, not, I'm just saying that, okay, possibly 10 people could learn something new today. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I think this whole time you've had for yourself and the way you've used it uh, and then how it's impacted your brain, uh, I think it's amazing. Uh, I mean, it's been, it's been a, a time of learning for me as well. I completely agree with you. Uh, I mean, I, and, and to be honest, like when I see you travel, when I see you do your centerpieces, right, your table settings, there's so much of nature. There's so much of the outdoor. You know, you're not spending lakhs of rupees trying to just no. put something together. It's actually what someone sitting at home can do. Yeah. So I think that's great. You've actually taught so many people uh, through your I, lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we spoke about trends, you know, in every in every business, there's a trend, whether you talk about fashion, fashion design, of course, interiors. Um, is there any trend that you uh, want to follow and one that you'd really like to get rid of? Because I'm sure there are some where you're like, I hope this doesn't stay for long. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm not a trend person, never with my clothes, uh, never with my fashion style or otherwise. I actually, um, I believe in, uh, in creating something unique on a daily basis for my clients and, and unique for them and special for them. Um, I, I don't think there's, I mean, there's something which I follow as a trend. I've never, um, I've, I've actually never been, been that person at all. And, um, so, but what I enjoy, um, I, I, I'm kind of enjoying this, this whole, uh, you know, you know, doing up the house in an easy, in a more comfortable, in, in like a cocoon, in, you know, like a nurturing way. Yeah. Uh, people, people understanding that it's not always about design, like design, like designed, 
homes. Yeah. It's more, uh, it's more uh, a home where you're comfortable. You're, and it speaks about yourself and your experiences and your travel and, and where you come from. Um, and, and I love that. I love that. I love, I love that, you know, people are thinking that way. And, uh, and also, you know, I've seen with my clients now uh, over the last year that a lot of clients who used to be workaholics are actually saying that, hey, uh, can you just build me this, this study at home? Because I don't think I'm ever going back to the office <laughs> that, that six days or seven days a week, which I used to. You know, I'm, I'm happy to do uh, three, four days of meetings and then work from home. So I think it's here to stay for a bit. Uh, and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, homemakers uh, are also, you know, I so there's a lot of things, Sean. It's like um, you have a, a constraint of space in apartments. Yeah. And like you said, you each of you have carved out a niche to work in or to be in. Um, and, and even if the same thing is large homes, and I've seen my clients with fabulous homes, but they also want their own space. And even if the kids have been sharing, I mean, I'm talking about kids, six, seven year old kids sharing a room and today they want their own space. So uh, everybody is looking for that. And whether it's a corner of an apartment or a large space, uh, they all want their own zone. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, I, and you know, so these, these very comfortable chairs or this relaxed kind of couch where you can sit, work on uh, just this Zen space or a space completely covered with nature or art, which is your own space. Uh, these have become very popular. I love that. Yeah. I love, I love that you're making your own spaces and uh, you're creating that, you know, you know, even if you call me and say, Benita, do you think black and white will work here? Or should I bring in the botanicals? Or should I bring in the advantage wise? And, you know, I can help you with that. But uh, yeah, um, and I don't know. I mean, I'm so happy the, the, the big thing of luxury brands being uh, plastered in every part of the house with big logos. Um, is is hopefully in my own head on its way out. Yeah. I don't know everybody else's head. <laughs> um, you know, I've always been that that person who would wear linen, but possibly if I if I love what you know a brand, and I do many, I probably wear a ring or a earring. Yeah, uh, you know, to accessorize. Yeah. Uh, with that so it's it's like that I think that's that's going to be huge and I think it is already ah, I mean think about it when was the last time and we, we haven't gone out much when was the last time you pulled out your bags yeah. <laughs> it's been a while it's been a while and and I think that um, more than even your you know your uh, design of homes which shows that I love your personal style in that sense because for you it's always never been about brands it's about, you know, you, you're eclectic, you mix, mix and match. And I think that's fabulous. And like you said, this lockdown has taught us all that, right? It doesn't have to have a big logo. It doesn't have to be. And a lot of people are working from home. So I think that's a huge lockdown trend. Like people are calling you and saying, create me a space, which, you know, yeah. I can work out of home. I think that's, that's yeah. it. Um, yeah. So I want to ask you now, uh, I was chatting with a few people when I told them I'm interviewing you. And the first question they said was, how is she acing her social media game? <laughs> That's a question that everyone wants to know. I mean, you really, I think it's very real. It's very authentic. You don't think it through. It's not like you're planning for months. Uh, you know, you're, you're not like, I'm going to post this today. So tell me more about uh, your social media game. So I've started enjoying it. I've started enjoying it because uh, when, I, when I started it a few years ago, I was not even on Facebook. Um, I've never been on social media. And I've said that never. I hadn't even read a Facebook page. I, I used to read Twitter uh, occasionally because it just just come up in conversation. But um, honestly, I was never on it. I even I remember speaking to Sharmila, and Sharmila was like, "No, you know, you you you're crazy. You need to see what it's all about." And uh, I think one day I was talking to Bia, my daughter, and um, I said somebody was. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, we had just come back from a trip to the Biennale and Ashish, and there were a whole bunch of us together. And Ashish was already acing his Instagram game. And he kept saying, you know, saying that, look at this, look at this. And, you know, and we were taking lots of pictures. I was taking pictures of him and he was taking pictures of me. 
and and the group and um, and he was so on it and he told me one day and I said look I'm just getting into social media and he said just keep posting um do, you know just keep posting and I'm like okay but uh you know uh what if uh, I'm posting rubbish uh when he says you'll figure it out you know you know you'll, <laughs> you'll figure out whether you're posting rubbish or if anybody's at all interested yeah so um, actually, that's been pretty much my ethos. It's been I will post what I love or what I, what I enjoy, and I'm just hoping somebody else likes it as well. So um, you know, there are a lot of times, and I've spoken to Dia about it because uh, she's in the game, and uh, I've, I've said that uh, you know, guide me if I'm wrong, uh, and 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 she's laughed about me. I mean, she's like said, "The company is crazy." You know, at one point I was posting flowers and trees all the time and she says you become this crazy nature lady and like <laughs> I said you know <laughs> that's what I'm seeing today and now uh, that's what I'm going to post yeah. uh, and I really don't think about it like I do not think about it it's not that I am planning the game it's uh, I've been to a site today and I was super excited about some tiles of which I saw so I posted it yeah. uh, I was um, you know uh, running around the Bangalore club and there was this uh, this amazing puja going on and so I posted it. Yeah. It's not, it's, and I do it in a second. I do not think of what I'm writing. I never edit. I do nothing. So That's it's, brilliant. you know, it's possibly, uh, you know, it's part of the whole uh, creative thing, I, I assume. Yes. And if people are liking it, yay. <laughs> <laughs> people are loving it, let me tell you. And I think that's that's the more real and authentic part of it, that you don't think it through. Uh, okay, if it's a brand and a brand needs to post yeah. about their FA, like their ethos, I think that's different. But you as a person come across through your Instagram and, and what you really are. So I think that's the advice. Keep it real and don't think it, don't think over it too much. Thank you, thank you. So yeah. I'm going to learn from that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so since we have a few people on our platform that are possibly budding interior design, you know, I want to ask you a few technical questions. Um, is there any space in the house that you think which you design, which is often overlooked? You know, a lot of people just don't give it that much importance. But when you look at a project, you're like, hey, that's the space I'm going to look into. You know, uh, everybody says it's a glamorous job and all that stuff. But uh, I keep saying, you know, I'm, I'm the person who does this beautiful glamorous living room, but I also do the bathrooms, you know that. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, and I feel that it shows, it shows, it shows that, you know, when the house has a style and it runs all the way through to the loose, uh, to the utility spaces, uh, to the back of the house, um, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I think it needs to be neat, clean, and practical and functional at, at that point. But um, I'm saying you need to look it through. Every place has a design set. Uh, it needs a design, yes. whether it's just multiple storages or whether it's, you know, the couch, which needs to be a conversational piece or whether it's a couch, which needs to create a conversation. Uh, those kind of things are very important. So you need to look at the entire space and without leaving out spaces. And, and as uh, professionals, we have we are asked to uh, build spaces which are, uh, uh, are, are so customized. Like if I was doing your home or mom's home, I would really need to know, you know, how many perfumes you own or, you know, uh, it's, 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 you know, do you need a... Um, do you need more space for your lipstick or do you need more, you know, space for hair dryers or whatever it is? Because we create those spaces. So we, have, we cannot afford to miss out on a single space. And, and today, um, custom made uh, is, is huge. Yes. So, yeah. And so um, I think we have to think of every space. A lot of people do, you know, and I see this in a lot of builder homes as well where they do tend to compromise on loose or the aesthetic of that. And uh, staff rooms, uh, I feel staff rooms cannot be ignored. Look where we are today. I mean, yes. Come on. Yes. So um, yeah, I, I think if you see the space and the overall impact and uh, scale it to your needs, um, every space is important, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So my last two questions for you, you know, I want to ask you, one is what you think about the working style of today where we are. I mean, earlier it was all about word of mouth. Today we have digital. Today we have, you know, like networking groups, meetups. What's your take on this? It's very different, Sean. Um, with with the media being what it is, uh, sometimes you can be portrayed as what you're not. Um, you can be portrayed as this amazing designer and when it comes down to work ethics or brass tacks, and you may not be that. Or you can be portrayed as a mediocre designer because your digital game is not so strong. And you could be like amazing at what you do. So um, uh, that's huge. And I see that a lot. I see that, like, I see uh, uh, some amazing people who just are not in their media game. Um, they just, they're just not interested or they don't have the time or whatever it is. And I'm like, you are amazing. You know, if you would put your work out there or, uh, you know, they don't realize that they need to put their work out there until they're putting something else out there, you know. <laughs> I, I think this whole thing is, is massive. And I've seen the impact of it firsthand. Um, so that's a huge, huge, because when I started out, I don't even think we ever advertised who we were. Yeah. Uh, we never as professionals said, hey, we're so, so and so, and we're so amazing, and this is our brand. And we never said that in any way. I'm not talking about just saying that, hey, we're amazing, but where did we say it? So yeah. it was like if your mom uh, tried me uh, and said, oh, Benita is great. And she spoke to somebody else about me. And she said, yeah, that was totally it. Yeah. Like, like word of mouth. <laughs> and here it's like, let me check her out. Let me check this out. Let me Absolutely. Hear it. It's like, and you've got to be really careful actually what you put out there. So this is whole balance, uh, which is um, which, which you have to figure out, I think. That's actually That's- so spot on because it's talent, yeah. you know, like you mentioned. Yeah. You know, that a person could be so talented and be doing so well, but just doesn't have the media presence or this, you yeah. know, the media. And today PR is such a big thing. You know, people yeah. get so much PR articles and stuff about them, but some people lack in that game doesn't mean they're bad. It doesn't mean they're not good. No, and I've seen I've seen friends of mine who are amazing and they just don't they don't they don't know how to photograph their, uh, their yeah. you know, their pieces or their homes or uh, their walls or whatever, and they're like, uh, they don't take the time out, they don't have patience. So they do this photograph and they put it out and it looks like shit. I'm like, why are you putting it there? It looks so bad. Look at the lighting. So it's, you've got to figure it out. Yeah. And I think, uh, and I think one reason also for me uh, to, um, like you said, ace your, your game on, on the grab is because I am passionate about photography. Um, I love taking pictures, whether it's a portrait or whether it's you know nature or whether it's my wall. And I try and do it without any editing because I literally work with my phone, with nothing yeah. else, there's no yeah. computer editing or anything. So, um, uh, and I'm very particular about the lighting. I'm not great, but I at least I get you know, I, I get good results. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's, 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 you know, I see that a lot. Uh, that's a huge change. Also, there's a, there's a massive, and I think it's all media related, actually, there's a massive change on the celebrity, uh, you know, the whole celebrity thing. And uh, uh, a lot of talent is uh, ignored. Uh, because of that and I feel very sad for it um, I also feel uh, that because again because of media it's what you're wearing and how you're looking and where you're seen and, and sometimes you just don't want to go out like absolutely yeah it's like been there done that I'm happy to stay at home with my glass of wine please yes just- yes <laughs> Uh, you you hit the nail on the head. I actually totally agree because my mom's been in the events business, as you know, and I see such a change in her from what it was to today, you know. Uh, yeah. It's like those days it was all about events, media, PR. Today it's so different. Today it's so different. Though, yeah. yes, it is social media and digital, but it's a lot realer. 
And yeah. uh, I hope that people who have the talent and don't have that exposure get that as well. That's a big, yeah. uh, that's a big loss. No, and I see, I see um, people are learning now and I see they hiring, uh, you know, professionals to help them in this whole, in this whole business. And I, and it's really, really important. And I, I, and then there's a huge change. If people understand that, you know, this is what you need to do. Yes. And this is where you to be. And this is how you get to do it. You know, don't be lazy about it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, if that works, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ask you one question. Of course, this is a little cliche, but what's your favorite project of what you've done? Something unique, um, something which you enjoyed doing more than anything. There have been a lot, Sean, but lately, and I think uh, possibly it would be published uh, in, a, in a month or two. Uh, we've done an amazing project um, uh, for a client um, in Bangalore where I was, uh, well, I was privileged to work with him uh, in a way because I learned a lot. Um, and uh, he's very much into temple architecture and setting up temples and things like that. So we were able to use that craft uh, into the project and something which I'd never uh, seen before. And then I was guided with by him into seeing this temple architecture and to understanding what it was about. So that was a huge thing. And then there was this other project, which I mean, it was on my Instagram last year, early last year or before that, which was a, a house where I've done a lot of Islamic uh, architecture. And there again, there was so much learning. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know nothing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I've had uh, uh, opportunities and privileges of being with clients who have uh, amazing budgets and uh, who let me be and say, just, just do your thing. That's and, right. Yeah. This is like been over, over a number of years but um, I've had uh, a great time working with another client four five years ago who had um, this this farm uh, uh, yeah a riding school and a school and stuff like that and uh, and great taste and just let me be uh, we bought a lot of incredible art and so I kind of with him explored the whole art scene and customized uh, a lot of art for his home and mixed my antiques with it, which was, I thought, brilliant. I mean, at that point, I was able to go and shop uh, at Harrods. And uh, I don't know if you know that, but Harrods has a floor uh, which they keep for shoppers, uh, which which is like a private lounge and a private floor. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then, and then sort of you you get escorted there and you do your shopping and they come to come to you with all your, your bat and your lists and you know, <laughs> it gets brought to you and you it's like a suite, they call it a penta suite, where you, you can you can be there for three days with everything coming to you. <laughs> Imagine the kind wow. of shopping. Wow. <laughs> so, That's yeah. the dream. It was it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dream. Wow. That's great. I'm sure that you can't really choose. It's like choosing between your children, right? But yeah. I'm sure it's you learn with every new project and you yeah. evolve. So I think that's yeah, lovely. I can't choose. I can't choose. You can't choose. Yeah. Okay. My last question for you, since we are a community of networking, uh, you know, professionals, individuals, freelancers, um, we're also building a huge community. And I wanted to ask you how networking has helped you over the years, because my idea for starting the show was people look at networking in such a negative light. You know, and I, and I think it's unfair because I don't mean networking in the sense like, exchange business cards and only business, but it's building relationships. So what's your take? How has it helped you over the years of your business? It's huge, Sean. I mean, I don't think you can get anywhere without networking. I'm even talking about uh, in these times to get a bed for somebody who is ill. Uh, I mean, you, you have to make that call. I had um, an issue with a relative who fell sick right through like in the, in, in, when there were no beds available, I had to make a call. I mean, uh, forget about all that. And it's not just networking for business. It's networking sometimes to support a friend. It's sometimes, you know, you, you need that networking. I think it's it's really important and also to 
to understand and to learn what everything else is about. Why just, yeah, why just, it's not, see, you have to be honest. Everything is about connections. And if you stay disconnected, where are you going to be? You can't be disconnected. You might as well become a hermit or, you know, yeah. uh, it's not, that's, that cannot happen. And it is 100% about that. I think you're in a great business. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> You've hit the nail on the hit head. The nail on the head. But thank you. This has been so lovely chatting with you. I feel like it was a, a casual conversation, but I learned so much. And I wish you all the best to continue doing your fabulous work. And thanks for joining me on the show um, with your insights and advice. Thank you, Sean, for having me. It's been lovely. It's been lovely chatting with you. I always used to see you in and out, but uh, never chatted with you for so long. Yes. Hi, Shams. Okay, see you. Thank you so much.